Every year, from December through May, our scripture lessons and hymns at church take us through the life of Jesus. We spend most of December in the season of Advent. Then we remember how God promised in the Old Testament to send a Savior, and then right before Jesus began to preach and teach how God sent John the Baptist to tell people that the Savior had arrived. At the end of December and beginning of January comes Christmas. We celebrate the birth of Jesus. Then after Christmas comes Epiphany. For about six weeks, we remember how Jesus was revealed as the Son of God and the Savior of the world. We see Jesus at his baptism. We see him perform miracles. We hear him preach. We see him shine like the sun at his transfiguration. Now in February and March, we remember the last part of Jesus' ministry, when he suffered and died to take away our sins. This season is called Lent. Lent is actually an old word for spring, because Lent takes place as the days start growing longer and flowers start emerging from the ground and buds turn into leaves on the trees. Lent is 40 days long, the same amount of time that Jesus spent being tempted by the devil in the desert. We do something special at church during this time. We have services on Wednesday evenings. During them, we do something that we don't do at our Sunday services. We read from the Bible about what happened during the 24 hours leading up to Jesus' death and burial. This year, over the course of five services, we'll read from the Gospel of Matthew, chapters 26 to 27. We'll hear about Jesus' Last Supper with his disciples, how Judas betrayed him in the Garden of Gethsemane, about his trial before the Jewish religious leaders, and then his trial before Pontius Pilate, and then finally his crucifixion, death, and burial. Our, our virtual Wednesday services will still be a lot like they are when we have them in person. We'll have singing, reading, a, a devotion, prayer. We'll also have some choir sing. When we sing the liturgy and hymns, there will be recorded voices to lead us. But if you'd like to sing along at home, that would be great. Even though we won't be able to hear one another, we'll know that we aren't singing alone. Everything that you need to participate will be on the screen. One more note about about why we do this. The primary purpose of meditating on Jesus' suffering and death, it isn't to make us feel bad because that's what our sins did to Jesus. The purpose is to see how much God loves us, that this is what Jesus did to take away our sins. This is what God did to make us his children. And because he he did it, that means our sins are taken away. It means that we are God's children. In our service tonight, we'll hear about Jesus' enemies plotting to kill him, We'll hear about a woman who used precious perfume to prepare Jesus for his burial. And we'll hear about Jesus' celebration of the Passover with his disciples. If you'd like to follow along in your own Bible, the reading tonight is from Matthew chapter 26, verses 1 through 35. Let's begin by singing a responsive prayer and evening hymn. Your love in the 
Let us confess our sins in the presence of God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds, and in all that we have not done. Forgive us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Deliver and restore us that we may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are redeemed by Jesus Christ, and in him we are forgiven. Let us rest in his peace until the rising of the sun, when we shall serve him in newness of life. Amen. Now some children from our educational center will sing Glory Be to Jesus. Let us pray. Lord God, our refuge and fortress, your faithfulness has protected us through this day. Now send your holy angels to guard us from danger through this night. Give us peaceful rest, free from fear, that we may wake refreshed to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The Passion History reading from Matthew chapter 26. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, As you know, the Passover is two days away, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people assembled in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and they schemed to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or there may be a riot among the people. While Jesus was in Bethany in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste, they asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for my burial. Truly I tell you, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? So they counted out for him thirty pieces of silver. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says my appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. 
So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus told them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, This very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. We'll continue with the first four verses of Jesus, I Will Ponder Now. Catherine and Becca and Claire will lead the singing, but again, you are encouraged to join in from home.
Matthew begins his account of Jesus' suffering and death by letting us in on two conversations. In the first, Jesus tells his disciples what's going to happen in just a couple days. The Passover is coming up, and Jesus will be handed over to be crucified. The second conversation takes us to Jesus' enemies. Around the same time that Jesus is telling his disciples about his plan to be crucified, the religious leaders are planning to kill him. It appears that Jesus and his enemies want the same thing, just for completely different reasons. Jesus' enemies can't stand him. They've wanted to kill him for a while already. They've even tried a couple times already, just without success. By letting us in on these two conversations, Matthew shows us that Jesus is going to die on his terms, not on theirs. So look at the details of their scheming. They want to do it, number one, secretly, and number two, after the Passover, because Jerusalem is flooded with Israelites from all over the world who have come to celebrate the Passover. The chief priests and elders of the people are afraid that the people will turn on them if they do anything to Jesus. But Jesus will die on his terms, not on theirs. Nothing about his death is going to be a secret, and far from avoiding the Passover, Jesus will be crucified on that very day. Do you remember the Passover from the Old Testament? The Israelites were slaves in Egypt. God sent Moses to rescue them, but after nine plagues, Pharaoh wasn't budging. But God said the tenth plague would be the one to break Pharaoh and rescue his people. He has the Israelites make special preparations. Eat, every household is to slaughter a lamb. And then they paint the blood on the door frames of their houses. They, they eat the lamb with unleavened bread and bitter herbs, with their sandals on their feet, their staffs in their hands, cloaks tucked into their belts, because God was on his way to save, and they were going to leave Egypt that very night. So that night, God goes through Egypt, and he kills every firstborn son, except at every house that has blood on its doorframe. Someone has already died for that house, so God passes over it. With one fell swoop, God brings judgment on evil and deliverance to his people. And then God tells the Israelites to continue that meal annually thereafter so that they don't forget the great deliverance of their past. But there was more to the, that yearly celebration of the Passover than just that. God was also getting them ready for an even greater deliverance in the future, another rescue through the blood of a lamb. The sun sets on Thursday evening. The way that Israelites keep time, when the sun sets, that's when a new day begins. We call it Good Friday. They call it the Passover. Jesus celebrates God's great deliverance of the past. Then he heads out to the Mount of Olives to set in motion the pivotal moment of world history. He heads out to be the Lamb. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The Lamb whose blood causes God's judgment to pass over. Judas is waiting for him in the Garden of Gethsemane. The chief priests and the elders of the people are planning a secret trial. All of Jesus' disciples are about to desert him. Pontius Pilate doesn't have the backbone to stand up for an obviously innocent man. Oh, it seems like evil is rearing its head against Jesus and exposing its fangs. But remember, let there be no mistake about it. Jesus is going to die on his terms. He's in control. God has been preparing his people for this moment ever since Egypt, ever since the Garden of Eden, you could say, when God promised to crush the devil's head. It's genius the way Matthew opens his account of Jesus' suffering and death. Those two conversations, those two plans that will converge on a cross. Jesus' enemies are determined to kill him, and Jesus is determined to die for them. So let's keep that in mind over the next several weeks as we follow Jesus to his cross. It wasn't an accident that he died for you. It wasn't that evil got the best of him. No, this is the power and the love of your God in action. 
When the payment for your sin came due, Jesus stepped into the breach. When God comes in judgment, he sees the blood of the lamb on your door and his judgment passes over and all God has left for you is love. Let's keep that in mind over the next several weeks. Lent isn't just about Jesus dying. It's about Jesus dying for you. Amen. Let's pray. O God, our Father, by your mercy and might, the world turns safely into darkness and returns again to light. We place into your hands our unfinished tasks, our unsolved problems, and our unfulfilled hopes, knowing that only what you bless will prosper. To your great love and protection, we commit each other and all those we love, knowing that you alone are our sure defender, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll conclude with the last two verses of Jesus, I Will Ponder Now. Thank you for participating in the first virtual Lenten service. We'll continue these during the next four weeks in Lent. 
Next Wednesday, we'll hear about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane.